Talking hoops with Kevin McPherson now from hogville.net. Kevin, our Hog Hoops insider. Jalen Tate commits to Arkansas from northern Kentucky, and this is somebody who really, really bought into the positionless basketball scheme that Eric Musselman likes to play. What about it, Kevin? Well, I think it's a big addition. You know, he's rated number 11 among the 150 or so grad transfers in there by Jeff Goodman, a college basketball analyst. But when you look at what Arkansas had last year with Jimmy Witt, he really wasn't a point guard. He was Arkansas's most effective guy scoring in the mid-range and even around the basket. Uh, and then defensively, he was a lockdown guy and really an elite defender. And I think this move is sort of an answer to losing a guy like Jimmy Witt, another unselfish player. Uh, he's not your conventional at 6'6", six, six, a guy that can play the one, but he can also post, mid-post, slash to the basket. Not really a three-point shooter, but I think he'll complement guys like Isaiah Joe, Connor Vanover, and even Vance Jackson, a 6'9", grad transfer that Muslim recently added. Guys who can stretch the floor. So I think, you know, uh, Tate is a guy that can bring versatility at both ends. Uh, and the fact that, you know, you look at his stats – at a good Northern Kentucky team in the Horizon League. He's a two-time all-defensive team. That's big, but 14 points, five-and-a-half rebounds, three-and-a-half assists, a couple of steals a game. I think this is a, a, an important piece for Eric Musselman as he builds for year two. Yeah, Northern Kentucky winner of the Horizon League tournament this past season under head coach Darren Horn. Moving on, let's talk about Purdue's Matt Harms, who has now decided to uh, look elsewhere, and he's in the top ten as far as his list goes for the Razorbacks. The Hogs in his top ten. What about Harms? He's ten and three. A lot of people talking about how the potential is there to see this seven three combo with Connor Vanover. How great would that be? I think it would be great. I don't think that would just be a novelty. I think those guys could be on the floor for stretches of games uh, because Harms is a guy that can really play around the basket, and he is a rim protector. Uh, and then you look at Connor Vanover, really his, his strength as an offensive player is, a, is in the face-up game, even extending out beyond that three-point line. So I think and, and then on defense, imagine your back line <laughs> with two seven three guys where you're talking not only height, length, and, and wingspan. I mean, Arkansas could really pose some matchup problems for teams. And certainly you could always have a seven three guy on the floor if you don't want to play those guys together a lot because they could spell each other. But when you look at Harms' 40-minute numbers, he played about 20 minutes a game at Purdue last year. If you look if you expand that out to 40 points, or excuse me, 40 minutes, almost 17 points, nine rebounds, and four blocks. So a guy that would bring a lot of value and I think would definitely have Arkansas, assuming there aren't any more departures with an Isaiah Joe. We don't know about that yet, but let's say he comes back and you add this guy to the puzzle. I think Arkansas is going to come in preseason around the top 15 in the country. Okay, future hogs, at least when you spell it out right now, guys who are expected to sign coming up on Wednesday. We'll see how things play out. But, again, we have Moses Moody to talk about, K.K. Robinson, Jalen Williams. What's the forecast right now in terms of where those guys are right now? Yeah, I mean, they're all expected to sign. The, sign, the signing period is typically five weeks. It begins Wednesday, April 15th. The NCAA extended it out to August 1st, so it'll be April 15th through August 1st. But I think the plans are that these young men are going to sign fairly soon. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that with, with the details as they, as they become available. All right, this past Tuesday was the one-year anniversary of Eric Musselman hired by Arkansas, a guy who's not only hit the ground running in terms of what he's done scheme-wise and what he's done in terms of leading his team to 20 wins in his first year, but what he's doing on social media as well. Just kind of sum it up, Kevin. Yeah, I mean, I really think when you look at year one, it really came out with the social media splash. Here's a guy with a lot of energy, enthusiasm. He's strategic about things, and he, he's, he gets out of the box. And I think it gave Arkansas some national branding credibility before losses and wins were ever wins and losses were ever counted. So I think that was a step in the right direction. You look at the NBA field within the program, whether it's recruiting, whether it's you know how they conduct practices, how they uh, adjust in game, and different things that, that he brought to the table from all those years of NBA experience. I think that's another not only a branding win, but it's it's functional uh, for the young players who see themselves as future NBA players. So I think that's uh, a, a strength that, that Eric Mussman brought into the program in year one. And then I really just look at the season as a whole. You know, when you look at the 20 and 12, the team when the season ended was still playing for a chance at an at-large bid. Two wins, maybe three would have been needed in the SEC tournament. Uh, but when you look back on the injuries to Isaiah Joe, I think when you look at him in the lineup healthy, they're 17 and four and a surefire NCAA tournament team. You know, some things you can't control, Isaiah Joe being out of the lineup or playing injured, they were 3-8. and eight. So when I look back at the whole season, Drew, I gave Arkansas an A-minus under Eric Melselman in year one. All right, Kevin McPherson, Hogville.net, as always. We appreciate your work. And one more on the pig trail after this, visiting with former Hog Scooter Harris.